Hello lovely people who enjoy lovely things! My name is Rach and aren't difficult games just, ooh, aren't they just great? It's almost masochistic. We want these games to test us, to cause us pain, to make us question how we're managing to sit here for so long in absolute agony and why we continue to love it so much. Some video games are difficult by design, containing an extensive list of patterns and counters that will need to be learned in order to progress. Others are simply a test of patience, of how many times you can get knocked back and keep on trudging hopelessly ahead, and then some are excruciatingly painful combinations of both. The past decades has brought us more than enough stellar examples of video games that require a special kind of persistence to beat, and thus, the ancient art of video game difficulty lives on in these titles. Before we begin, it is fitting to prefix this with an honourable mention. Super Mario Maker 2 With user-submitted levels being potentially soul-destroying, this could potentially be the most difficult game ever created, due to player creation input. The only limits are the potential scope of your malevolent imaginations. That being said, these are the 10 most difficult video games of the decade. Number 10, Cuphead. It's actually pretty terrifying placing a game like Cuphead at number 10 on a list of difficult games. Cuphead blends classic retro animation techniques with classic retro gaming difficulty. It can be easy to look at for the first time and assume that it's going to be something wholesome to spend the afternoon with. Good God, no! Cuphead is a run and gun slash boss fight game that pulls no punches. You must go from difficult boss to even more difficult boss, defeating each of them as per a contract with the devil himself. Bosses will be fought on foot or in the air, firing bullets from either finger guns or airplane weaponry. Although the game can be played in single or multiplayer, neither mode is particularly easy, with the final two boss fights being among the hardest bosses in gaming history. Becoming popular exactly because of its difficulty, and therefore being a great feat to actually finish, Cuphead quickly rose up to the best-selling charts. Everyone wanted a chance to see a little cup shattered to pieces over and over again. Number 9. Celeste Celeste is a simple game about helping a girl climb a mountain. It's a shame that the mountain is literally dripping with constant peril, what with entirely being a metaphor for the girl's struggle with anxiety and depression. Helping to bring mental health awareness into the gaming spotlight, Celeste follows young Madeline's struggle to slowly undertake what sometimes seems like an impossible task. Mirroring just how difficult living with mental illnesses can be, Celeste's pixel-perfect precise platforming is wickedly cruel at times. You will fall down that mountain again and again and you will want to quit, but that is where you discover that this is a battle worth fighting for. Collecting every strawberry and then completing the post-game B and C side levels, you will encounter some of the most difficult platforming levels that exist in gaming. But, of course, it's all worth it. Number 8. Crypt of the Necrodancer If you thought roguelikes such as Spelunky and The Binding of Isaac were difficult last decade, try completing those while performing all actions along to a musical beat. Crypt of the Necrodancer is an indie rhythm game in a roguelike setting and features fantastically addictive dungeon crawling with randomly generated levels. Every action you take needs to fit into the, albeit incredible, original soundtrack's beats, whether it's walking, digging, attacking or dodging, and missing a beat resets your coin multiplier. Coins are used to purchase helpful equipment, but only rare diamonds persist through death meaning that progression is relatively slow and you're forced to learn every enemy's exact rhythm and movements in order to gradually tackle everything that they can throw at you. And then if you thought playing as the default character Cadence was bad enough, there are other unlockable characters to learn, with the hardest of all being Coda, who was almost removed from the game because the developers deemed her too challenging. Number 7. Fury Fury is bullet hell incarnate. An indie action shoot em up with a colourful retro style, Fury is a fast-paced and unforgiving boss fight game with hack and slash and twin stick shooter mechanics. Players will need to dodge hundreds of bullets, parry boss attacks, counter attack and perform quick time events in order to gain the upper hand on their opponents. Fury features 10 unique bosses, each hell-bent on stopping you from escaping the prison you are held in. Surprisingly sporadic difficulty spikes and a sheer invocation of panic are what make Fury a true accomplishment to conquer. 
fights can be incredibly unforgiving, with the neon lights of fiery bullet death constantly raining down upon you. Encounters are long and tough, with multiple phases to each of them, making every single level a huge relief to complete. That relief lasts but a few short moments before the next boss starts to kick your arse. Number 6. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice The latest masterpiece to be birthed from the legendary studio behind the Dark Souls series was way more difficult than anything we'd seen in Souls or Bloodborne. The combat is fast-paced and precise, requiring absolute focus and a mastery of both avoiding attacks and counter-attacking in return. Players will have only a fraction of a second to react to enemy stimuli, deciding whether to block, deflect, dodge or jump to the side. Sekiro stands above its soul's brethren in difficulty due to the absence of multiplayer co-op. Every trial and tribulation must be experienced alone, it's just you and your sweaty palms. With enough patience and a healthy dose of grinding, Sekiro's intimidation begins to wane, and boss encounters become much less impossible after a few good tries, especially once you get the hang of your resurrection powers. That being said, there are still some nightmares that will send you right back to that idol a good few dozen times. Number 5. The Witness Depending on your skills with puzzle solving and your ability to look at things differently, The Witness could potentially be the hardest or the easiest game ever. A puzzle game based around noticing patterns emerging in the world around you, Jonathan Blow's The Witness is truly a test of patience, critical thinking and problem solving. The problem is, the solutions are never obvious, and you can frequently stumble upon the solution by complete accident, meaning that you learn nothing from it. The game features over 500 line puzzles with zero hints on how to complete any of them. Areas in the game are split up into sections and each section has a theme around the puzzles that you will have to master in order to take that knowledge with you going forwards. You start to see the puzzles as more than just the lines as they start to appear within the world structure itself. Patience is the key here. Eventually, you'll totally understand the language that the game has quietly been teaching you. And before long, you'll be seeing the lines and dots wherever you look in real life. Number 4. Super Meat Boy He is neat, he's sweet, and he is made of meat. Meat Boy is a little red cube forced to make his way through over 300 ridiculously challenging levels featuring crumbling blocks, saw blades, and various other fatal instruments in order to rescue his kidnapped girlfriend, Bandage Girl. In the same sense as Celeste, the regular game levels are bad enough, especially if you're aiming to receive the top a ranking by completing them as fast as possible. But the post-game versions in the Dark World are even harder. Thankfully, those are optional. Super Meat Boy is one of the finest examples in gaming for being tough but fair, with intense emotional roller coasters taking you from feeling like a peasant one moment to a meaty champion the next. Number 3. Getting Over It with Bennett Foddy The premise of Getting Over It is simple. Control a naked man inside a cauldron and use your mouse to guide his climbing hammer to ascend the mountain before you. The execution is anything but simple. Constantly battling with gravity, with the slightest knock in the wrong direction potentially costing hours worth of work, the difficulty here is in managing to keep trying long enough without bursting a blood vessel. An obstacle that took you an hour to overcome can very easily be undone in mere seconds. While you are battling to maintain your composure, Mr Foddy will happily chant words of encouragement to you, which almost seem to have an adverse effect. Getting over it quickly became popularised through online reaction videos on YouTube and Twitch. We as gamers have a morbid fascination with watching others suffer, it seems. Number 2. 1001 Spikes If God were somehow able to transform the phrase bullshit into a worldly object, that object would look a lot like 1001 Spikes. As the name suggests, there are a lot of spikes in this game and a lot of spike-related death. From the creators of The Binding of Isaac, 1001 Spikes is a platformer set inside what is basically Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Paying homage to a time before checkpoints and difficulty settings, it plays like a NES game but with the modern smoothness of the present decade. If you slip up and die, it's on you, not the controls. You begin the game with 1001 lives, and you will need every single one of them, as you'll sometimes lose hundreds of them to a single level. The real difficulty here is somehow obtaining the patience and persistence necessary to make it through, as well as the ability to perform some well-timed jumps, of course. Number 1. Darkest Dungeon 
You can get good at Sekiro, practice super meat boy levels until they're memorized, or get super lucky with gear drops in Necro Dancer, but no matter how much you toil away in Darkest Dungeon, you can, and will, still frequently fail miserably. You'll lead a group of four adventurers of varying classes and movesets and attempt to clear dungeons. Heroes have two resources, health and stress. A hero can be doing perfectly fine one moment and then suddenly suffer a fatal heart attack the next, and once they die, they're gone for good. The difficulty coming wholly from being utterly unpredictable, Darkest Dungeon has a wickedly steep learning curve, more of a vertical line really, which only continues to get more and more difficult as the story progresses. Even going back to early levels to grind for gold and experience is ill-advised, as it will use up precious supplies and run the risk of your character's stress levels peaking. Guaranteed, your own stress levels will match theirs in no time. And that's our list. Thank you so much for watching. Any of these you managed to conquer, please do brag in the comments below. As always, I've been Rach. You can follow me on Twitter if you like at Don't Rach Quit, but you be sure to have an awesome day. Let's all just woo-sa. Woo-sa, let's just relax. Whoa. I love video games.